achieve such a bag. I did not know he would ever see that much money in his life. Um, good on New York for trading him to a team that was willing to pay him something like that. Absolutely no way New York was ever going to let him touch that kind of money. So, a uh, good thing that they shipped him off and got OG out of it before they probably would have lost him for nothing. Uh, and for the Raptors. Yeah, I guess you have a lot of value in it. Emmanuel Quickly and Scotty Barnes, if you can build around it, it's not bad. You're going to have these guys for many years to come. I just, I do think it's a little bit of an overpay. I don't know if Emmanuel Quickly is really that $35 million a year type of worth, but it's hard to retain players in Toronto, so we'll see. Hopefully you hand him the keys and he can have an even bigger jump next year being full-time in the starting position. Up, we've got a move by our defending Western Conference champs, the Dallas Mavericks. They decided to package Tim Hardaway Jr. and three second round picks off into the Gulag in Detroit, and in exchange, they received Quentin Grimes. Now, this move it is like a salary dump for the Pistons. They know that they can take him on, they know that they will acquire some future capital for taking on his contract and for. Mavericks, this is smart, uh, though he was your, a pretty key contributor in the regular season. Tim Hardaway Jr. was stinking it up in the playoffs, and he wants someone who can actually contribute and not eat up so much cap, so Quentin Grimes is a solid role player. He's going to get far less time, but I feel like even in the small spurts, he can make a pretty good impact. Anyhow, yeah, we'll see how Tim Hardaway Jr. is able to do with the change of scene. Maybe he can get back into rhythm. I don't know what really happened to him in the playoffs, but he just was not doing well at all. And uh, luckily with Detroit, he doesn't really have to worry about the playoffs anytime soon, so it works out. Next up, we have yet another move by the Toronto Raptors, and this is Bruce Brown's $23 million team option being picked up by the Raptors. So they're going to keep Bruce Brown for this upcoming season. Um, I feel like he's going to get traded at some point. I don't think that they're going to keep him. Just my take on it. He's a solid player, but they don't need him for anything. They're not going to extend him long term, I don't think. And I don't know what they're really cooking up at the moment. So I don't see them holding on to him. I think either probably mid-season he's going to get traded again like he did by the Pacers. And then after that we have our first move by the Charlotte Hornets. And this is not a signing, it is actually a waving. The Hornets are waving Seth Curry, son of Del Curry who played for the Hornets for a long time. Uh, so sad move for Seth, but I'm sure the market, I'm sure there'll be some kind of market for his talents, a solid three-point shot. Then we've got a very, very large move coming out of Atlanta. You've got the Atlanta Hawks sending DeShante Murray to the New Orleans Pelicans in exchange for Larry Nance Jr., Tyson Daniels, and two first-round picks. Now, this move for Atlanta is going to seem not as promising. I mean, yes, the Trey Young to John Murray combo did not work, but also compared to what the Hawks put in to land to John Murray, I don't think that this haul is as impressive uh, in return. They do pick up some nice guys like Larry Nance is a solid player, Dyson Daniels emerging defender, but I think truly the winner of this trade is New Orleans. You get a true point guard to bear with Zion when he's healthy and to play in front of CJ 
is not a bad idea and they also get Dyson Daniels I think that both teams do benefit from what they're trying to do um, and yeah next up we have a move by not really a team but more so a player there's Russell Westbrook picking up his four million dollar player option to stay with the Los Angeles Clippers now this is an interesting one because I saw something earlier today saying that it looks like he's going to be dealt that the expectation is that Russ has played his last game for the Clippers and that he is going to be traded somewhere and that's really too bad I feel like he accepted his bench role very well he provided a good spark and four million dollars is a very small amount for truly the amount of talent and skill that Russell Westbrook could bring to your basketball team so hopefully wherever he goes he is respected and admired and given a good role to contribute to their success uh, it's kind of kind of a shame that the Clippers are not trying to keep him but after that we have a move from the Phoenix Suns this would be Royce O'Neal returning to the Suns on a four-year, $44 million deal. Uh, nothing major, but they picked him up during a trade during the regular season. I guess Kevin Durant is a fan of him, and you want to try and keep KD happy. So, uh, yeah, solid move. Then we have one of our bigger stories of the offseason with Paul George declining his player option to become a free agent. So this happened on the Saturday before free agency officially opened. Uh, and that was a rough day if you're a Warriors fan because up until that point there were lots of rumors that the Warriors were going to engage in a sign and trade to try and acquire Paul George. They're trying to put together a package uh, around CP3 and Wiggins. But it seems like Clippers also wanted Kuminga in the deal, and the Warriors were unwilling to make that happen, and so the Clippers ultimately vetoed the trade. They said, no thanks, we don't want it, even though Paul George was on board and the Warriors were on board, and so Paul George was forced to decline, and by declining, he was out of, you know, uh, out of the Warriors' range. They could no longer acquire him. He just cost too much money on a max deal without the sign and trade so unlucky day for them this is also the day that the report came out that clay thompson will no longer be returning to the warriors he is expected to test his free agency market and they have both mutually recognized that this is his last his last day in the bay area has been played um and so yeah very brutal 24 hours if you're a Warriors fan you went from thinking maybe you could get Paul George have a successful offseason to oh wow we're losing clay and we're not gonna get Paul George but it is what it is after that we've got a four year 60 million dollar deal by the Indiana Pacers towards Obi Toppin to keep him around uh, yeah you know they had a successful season a year is not bad for what Obi Toppin provides. I think it's a good signing. Then we've got the Los Angeles make Lakers making their big free agency splash by signing, re-signing Max Christie to a four-year $32 million deal. Uh, they retain the young guy. I don't know. If, uh, I don't know if I would call him a contributor. His ceiling is unknown. I feel like he's not a bad player. He's just he doesn't get a lot of minutes. They need to develop him more. And definitely for the Lakers franchise, that's not a hefty enough move to satisfy their fans. Their fans are very um, passionate is a word you could use. And yeah, I don't know how Lakers fans are going to feel about them that being their biggest free agency move thus far but it is what it is 
was successful and they had to give him up and then now they're bringing him back. I just think it didn't work and they let him go for that reason. So, it's like a failed experiment. They're trying again. It is a very small deal, so low risk and maybe it's nice to have another big bodied guy, but yeah, I don't think it was really that necessary for the 76ers. Oh well. And then after that, we have one of our major free agency moves of this year, and it is the Orlando Magic signing Kentavious Caldwell Pope to a three year, $66 million deal. Uh, and this is huge for both the Magic and the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets losing one of their key pieces during their championship run, a uh, big 3 and D guy in their starting lineup. They could not retain him, it seems, and Orlando just made a run at the fifth seed. Uh, they're very young, arm grown for the most part. You know, you've got, uh, what, Franz Wagner, Apollo Boncaro. They are leading this young team, and they get a little bit of veteran leadership. It's someone they can slide into that starting two role and provide very good, you know, three-pointers in defense. They needed scoring. They weren't as good from uh, the three-point range, and so they get a guy who can knock down that shot. And, uh, yeah, great move for the Magic. Tough, tough look for the Denver. We'll have to see how they respond to that. And then, after that, we had uh, the Detroit Pistons making yet another move. And this would be giving Kate Cunningham a five-year, $226 million maximum rookie extension. Uh, and yeah, you have to do this as the Pistons. Kate Cunningham is one of the very few bright spots on your team. He has been solid, number one overall pick. Like, there's nothing wrong with him. He obviously hasn't made any all-star teams or anything like that, but it's very, it's been a very short time into his career, and uh, they've been awful. Like, they really have not given him any pieces to su succeed. So, yeah, lock him up for five more years. Hopefully, you can do better by him in these next couple years. But, good that they didn't just let him go. Uh, I don't think that was ever the case, but a full maximum, I think, is deserved. He has been their best player. Outside of maybe Jalen Dern. That we've got the Washington Wizards making a move, signing Jonas Valachunas to a three year, $30 million deal. Uh, and I was very surprised by this just because I thought that his market was going to be more competitive. I didn't think that the Wizards was a place he was going to end up. It sounded like contenders had a bit of interest in him. Uh, I guess after Memphis picked up Sakide, they had no reason to go after him. There are a lot of reports that the Lakers wanted to pick up a guy of Valor Junius's ability, or him himself. Um, and three year, ten million dot, three year, thirty million is only ten million dollars a year. I feel like they probably could have offered something like that. It's surprising that they could not land them. Um, so sucks to suck if you are a Lakers fan and the Wizards acquired a guy who. Uh, will probably take over that starting center role. So that means Alex Sar at the four, Kuzma at the three, Valjunas at the at the five, and then I don't know maybe Pool at one and Brogdon at two if Brogdon is able to play. Uh, we'll see. We'll see.
actually very excited to see this duo. I think they're going to be a lot of good highlights because it's one of the best, the league's best passers ever, going to like the greatest lob threat in the league at, like, at the moment. Um, I mean, yeah, that's going to be a good, good duo. <laughs> and then after that, we have the Phoenix Suns making a move to sign Mason Plumley to a one year deal. Uh, the, the Phoenix Suns lost Drew Eubanks. I don't think I have it in here, but uh, Drew Eubanks, he like opted out of his option. And so, looking for a backup center, they opted to go with Mason Plumley. I feel like that's not a bad option. They also, um, yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> that's all I have to say about it. Then, after that, we have yet another move by the Dallas Mavericks, and this is the pickup of Najee Marshall on a three-year, $27 million deal. This, I think, is a good move. You get a guy who's pretty solid on defense. Gives you a lot of effort on defense. And it will help them out. I think they're addressing their playoff concerns right now. Getting rid of Tim Hardaway. They're signing Najee Marshall. These are all good moves for the franchise. They are, you know, I mean, they were just about to win the championship in terms of, like, they're right there and they're looking for moves that will help them get over that tiny edge. I think they did a great job at the trade deadline. They're just looking to build a little more on that success. And this is a good move in that vicinity of trying to get you over the hump. And then with that, you do also have a loss from the Dallas Mavericks. The Los Angeles Clippers end up signing Derek Jones Jr. to a three-year, $30 million deal. Uh, and I think this is fine after the Mavericks. Derek Jones Jr. did have a career year, kind of revitalized his career, gave you great playoff performances, but that's not really something you can expect to maintain for a guy who was playing on the veteran minimum contract. Uh, so it was great, great value. Um, he helped them have an amazing... So yeah, he's a, he's a guy who helped you contribute a lot in your playoff run, but... I think getting someone like Najee Marshall is a smarter move than trying to give Derrick Jones all that money. Good that the Clippers were able to give Derrick Jones that, and hopefully he's able to be productive for them. I do think that he does not see the same amount of success that he did uh, this year, but maybe I'm just being pessimistic. And yeah. After that, this is the Philadelphia segment of this video where they make a ton of moves, and I document them all back to back to back. So first up in this collection is Kelly Oubre signing a two-year $16.3 million deal to stay with the 76ers. And then right after that, we're going to jump into the big splash of the Philadelphia 76ers free agency market. They go ahead and sign Paul George to a four-year $12 million max contract. Uh, it was stated by Paul George's camp that he is looking for teams with the most cap space to sign a max contract with. Uh, the Warriors were going to offer him a max, but they couldn't anymore. So his options became the Clippers, the Magic, and the 76ers. Joel Embiid had been hinting that he wanted this pairing all offseason, especially in their broadcast booth appearance together uh, during the finals. And so, yeah, big move for the 76ers. I think that uh, it makes a very nice trio. You had Tyrese Maxey make his first All-Star game. You get a proven All-Star guy in Paul George, and you still have Joel Embiid. Very nice move. Uh, they're putting all, all their, they're going all in in this free agency. And then, yes, you have another move from the 76ers. This is when they signed Tyrese Maxey to a five-year, $204 million maximum extension, uh, and he had a career year. I think this is fully deserved. Great job to him. Now you have all three of your main guys locked up. You have to go out there and make it worth it. We'll see what they can do. And then, right after that, you've got yet another move. The final move uh, for now by the 76ers is them getting Eric Gordon up off of the Suns. Um, and yeah, Eric Gordon, though he 
he's not the same guy he used to be, he can still provide some three-point shooting off the bench, and it's definitely a solid pickup. So yeah, with that, we move back into the Chicago Bulls, and the Bulls are signing Jalen Smith to a three-year $27 million deal. Uh, I feel like this is actually a pretty solid move. You know, you're going to get rid of Vucevic. You have Jalen Smith, who is sitting in the lower on the depth chart of the Indiana Pacers. They weren't going to be able to pay him um, because they're just not utilizing him as much. But I feel like he has some untapped potential. And so a team like Chicago that is looking to get younger and rebuild, I think this is actually a very nice move from them. Um, we'll see how well he can contribute right off the bat. But I honestly think it's a good signing for Chicago. Okay, and then after that, we switch over to an OKC segment. We have the Thunder making quite a few moves in a row. So first up, there were these rumors that the Thunder needed a big man. They wanted a guy to be their center enforcer to get more of the rebounds. Uh, because Jet, while he is great, they want to move him into the four spot. And so in order to do that, you have to go out there and sign a center. And they got their guy in Isaiah Hartenstein of the New York Knicks. They signed Hartenstein to a three-year, $87 million deal. Um, and this is exactly what they were looking for. But they did pay a hefty price for him. Hartenstein, $29 million a year for three years is a significant amount of money. I do think it is a little bit of an overpay. But your team, your GM is amazing. I'm not really going to question any moves that the OKC Thunder make because they took whatever they had last year. They were already the one seed, and now you've added Alex Caruso in a true center. So I'm not going to question the value of this deal. If that's what they wanted to pay to get their guy, then they did it, and they get exactly who they needed. So the Thunder are scary. signing. This is a re-sign. They signed Isaiah Joe to a four-year, $48 million deal. Uh, they had declined his team option to get him more money and lock him up for longer. So I think this is a good move by them, keeping one of their key guys this year. And yet another move by the OKC Thunder, signing Aaron Wiggins to a five-year, $47 million deal. And I think this is actually quite low for his contribution here could be making more, uh, even so they, they give him a good pay increase from what he was scheduled to make this year, get the deal done now, lock him up for more years, um, so it works out both ways, but yeah, great year by both Isaiah Joe and by Aaron Wiggins, and they get paid a decent amount to showcase for it, and then after that, we have the swindler himself, Tobias Harris signing a two-year, $52 million deal with the Pistons, and uh, I actually think that the winner of this move is the Philadelphia 76ers. You've got 76er fans who absolutely hate Tobias Harris's guts by now, uh, for good reason. He's just unbelievably mid for the amount of money that he makes, and I don't know how his agent landed him. You have another big deal for what he is doing, but... You got it. So the Pistons, you've got Cade, you've got Tim Hardaway, you've got uh, Tobias Harris. I, the Pistons are doing something. We'll see, we'll see how, how they do, but yeah, it just seems like, I don't know, <laughs> I, I actually don't know what is up with this move. And then, after that, we've got one of our bigger contracts of the free agency period, and this would be Derek White signing a four-year, $125.9 million extension with the Celtics. Uh, this was to be expected. The Celtics just won the chip. They're trying to keep their core together, and Derek White was due for some money. A uh, fantastic role player during their last two playoff runs. They had an amazing season. Lots of talk of at least people thinking 
his impact was worthy of an all-star nod. Obviously, he didn't get one, and I'm glad that he didn't end up on the all-star team, but he is. He's worth every penny of that contract, in my opinion. So, if the Celtics can stay healthy, this is a great move to extend their championship window. They're doing a good job, even though I don't know where any of the money is coming from. They're doing well. making yet another move and this would be the signing of Clay Thompson to a three year fifty million dollar deal. Uh, and you know this is what it is. Clay Thompson and the Warriors they had a great run. They benefited each other a lot. Clay an integral part of all four champions uh, championships battled through two back to back brutal injuries, came back, was able to them in that fourth chip for sure. Obviously the last two years have been more of a struggle and so it led to a heated debate between what his worth is in the eyes of the franchise and in his own eyes and I think they both did well by each other. Uh, you know, Clay for two of those four years of his contract he was injured and he made like 90 million dollars and Clay did a lot for the Bay. Like, no person is going to ever Out Clay Thompson's contribution and his greatness and his impact uh, on the Bay Area and the Warriors franchise. He is a legend, and it is truly a shame that he could not finish it out with us. But, uh, you know, he's got to do what is best for his own career uh, and be happy. So I respect it. That being said, I don't want him to win another ring without us. Uh, I, I would absolutely hate to see that. again, just because it feels wrong. I I do wish that the Splash Bros could finish out together, and I'm always going to root for the Warriors above all, and since the Warriors still have Stephen Curry, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm going with one Splash Brother over the other. I wish Clay all the most regular season success, but when it comes to the finals, I hope that I hope that he plays well and that they lose, uh, because I don't want to see him suppress any of our main guys in rings. That would be an absolutely brutal blow, and yeah, I'm just a salty fan, but it is what it is. And then after that, we have the Warriors countering this move and responding by using their mid-level exception to acquire D'Anthony Melton of the 76ers. Uh, they get him on a one-year $12.8 million deal. Uh, obviously, the Anthony Melton is nowhere close to the kind of player Clay Thompson is, but he provides solid defense. And so, Clay def Clay's defense was on the decline. Uh, in the last two years, he has not looked as good. Very rough starts to the season. In the playoffs, his defense was also just okay. Uh, he does ramp up at times, but the Anthony Melton is a bit younger, and I think that his defense will be better. So, an okay move. After that, we have another move by the Clippers, where they managed to re-sign Nick Batum. They had lost him in the trade for James Harden, but it seems like Batum wasn't really keen on leaving, and the Clippers didn't really want to part with him, so he comes right back. He signs a two-year, $9.6 million deal, and I think that works for both sides. Uh, good signing. And then we have our biggest signing of NBA free agency so far. Celtics signing Jason Tatum to a five-year, $314, $314 million max extension, uh, making him the, giving him the largest NBA contract in history. Uh, this beats out Jalen Brown's contract from last season, where he, I think it was like five-year, 304, and so, or maybe 309, something. Yeah, uh, well-earned, well-earned. I do think that he has their franchise cornerstone piece, um, along with Jalen Brown. They just won a championship. The fact that they're able to pretty much lock up every single player, like, 
this video is not covering very minor signings. Um, I did skip out on some of those, but not only did the Celtics manage to keep Tatum and Derek White, but they also have kept like Nemias Keita, Luke Cornett, and uh, Xavier Doman. So they're really just running it back with the exact same squad. And I don't mind that strategy at all when you dominated the way they did in the playoffs and the regular season. Why would you bother losing anyone? So, good job on them. And after that, we have yet another move by the Orlando Magic. This is them re-signing Gary Harris to a two-year, $14 million deal. Uh, Gary Harris just played shooting guard for the Magic this year. He had a very solid year with them, and uh, they signed KCP to take over the starting spot, but Gary Harris as your backup shooting guard is not bad, not bad at all. So, good moves by the Magic. And then, earlier, I think I'd mentioned that the Clippers lost um, their backup center in Mason Plumley. so they go out and they get Mo Bamba from the 76ers on a one-year deal. I like this move because he is also a thin, tall center, and I think that he can, he has not hit his max potential. I think that he can be a little bit better than he has been so far in his career. He looked very promising coming out of college, and I still have hope, so I, I like the one-year deal. Smart. Uh, this is not a guard. I'm glad that we don't just pick up another. 
terms of slow-mo running offensive plays and setting screens for the Timberwolves in the playoffs, uh, he, he was like a, a decently important piece in their run this year, so I don't mind it. I don't think that it is like a game-changing piece, but he's not a bad pickup, and it's not a lot of money, so solid move. I don't mind. Then we have one of our larger non-stories of the summer. Uh, obviously, LeBron could have opted out and become a free agent this summer, but with the Lakers drafting Bronny and uh, just them getting J.J. Redick, I think it was a big... James drama in this offseason is going to be very civil and normal, and so the only discourse we really had was LeBron was willing to take a paycheck in order to bring in another key role player in a championship run. Uh, these players were discussed to be Clay Thompson or uh, Jonas Valanciunas, and they missed out on both of those guys, so LeBron opts to go for a close to his max. His max would have been $104 million. He stays $3 million shy of it so that the Lakers can avoid the second apron. Um, so yeah, good. <laughs> I mean, obviously good on the Lakers. Give LeBron what he wants. Then we have yet another signing by the Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns uh, re-signed Damian Lee to a one-year deal. He's a solid backup point guard. I remember watching him in the Warriors. I feel like he's a pretty decent ball handler and shooter. Uh, decent in the mid-range and small game. And yeah, he has like a game winner with the Suns that I think is pretty memorable. So good move by them, keeping him for cheap. For cheap. And then the Suns make another card move where they pick up Monte Morris um, on, a, I think, a one-year deal. I think this is also a good move, just because the Suns have no money, and Monte Morris is a solid player, so uh, you take what you can get. Then, the, one of the more surprising signings of free agency, with Joe Ingles coming to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, I didn't know that the Timberwolves were in the market for a shooter, or that they wanted Joe Ingles, but when you consider the fact that he has chemistry with Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert, his old teammates from Utah, it's not that bad of a move. Uh, it was just, it definitely caught me off guard. Uh, when I think of Anthony Edwards' aura, and then when I think of Joe Ingles, I do think that they're like polar opposites. So, it's it was just a bustling move. Uh, 
his shooting numbers weren't really that down uh, from three-point range. He still gives you at least like three threes a game, and Buddy Hill can actually do the exact same thing. So, uh, on the defensive department, yes, Clay has declined defensively. I also don't think that Buddy Hill is that good of a defensive player, but offensively, spacing-wise, and what he can do, uh, I think this is great for the Warriors. You literally just scaled down, got one of the best three-point shooters in the league to replace one of the best three-point shooters in the league. And if they can get him open, this is great. This is ideal. Replacing Clay with Buddy Hield in the Anthony Melton is actually not bad at all. Uh, you get the same offense and you get better defense uh, in split across two players rather than adding it all beyond Clay. So I'm a fan. I'm a fan of this in hindsight. I think that overall it could be an upgrade. Uh, we'll just have to see. But, yeah, I'm expecting a career year from Buddy Hill. And then, after that, we have the Orlando Magic giving Franz Wagner a five-year, $224 million max rookie extension that could be worth up to $270 million. And, yeah, I think that Franz is kind of in that similar place as uh, Gade and Scotty. I think Scotty is worth a bit more, but Franz, young guy, doing well, uh, contrary to the Pistons, like, Pistons have to give Gabe that money because he's the only good player. Franz and Paolo are doing a great job, uh, exceeding expectations. I didn't think that the Magic would be any good in the East this year, but they finished fifth, and he has a big part of that. Their second best player, uh, is very young. Locking him up the long term makes sense, and I do think that he has the potential to live up to this contract. I just do worry that, like, if down the line this is too much money and they have to pick between Paolo and him, Paolo's gonna get picked. So hopefully it doesn't interfere with their future contract signings, but I think it's a good move. Then, speaking of the Pistons, we have them making yet another move, signing Malik Beasley a one-year, $6 million deal. Don't know what the Pistons are doing. They're picking up a lot of vet guys who are, like, semi-washed. Um, and maybe they're going to make a run at something if everyone can click and get it going. It's kind of like the opposite of what they've been doing. They've been playing with a lot of trash young guys, and now they're going for more one-man's trash, another man's treasure strategy with these older guys. So you've got Malik Beasley now. You've got Tim Hardaway. Got Tobias Harris. We'll see what they can do. Honestly, I have no idea who's starting. Kate and Jalen Jalen Duran have to start. I imagine Asar Thompson has to start. With the contract that they give Tobias Harris, I think that he has to start. And then I don't know. But yeah. Pistons, they're they're cooking something. signing Caleb Martin of the Miami Heat to a three-year, $40 million deal. Uh, and this is interesting because the Heat actually offered him more money. Uh, it was like a five-year, $65 million, or four-year, $65 million. It was like a similar amount. Um, but rather than staying with the Heat, he chose to change his scenery. And I think that's is a good move for the 76ers just because they're changing up things, they're going all in, and this is not a bad signing. They had a lot of cap space and they're using up all of it, so good on them. See what you can do this year. Maybe this will finally be the year they can make it past the second round, but we'll have to see. And then you have the Spurs making another move uh, where they send Devontae Graham in a second round pick to the Hornets as like a salary dump. Uh, Devontae Graham, though he is pretty solid at scoring the ball, he can't do a ton else, and I don't think that helps with what they're looking for in terms of play style along Wemby. And uh, yeah, the Hornets, they've seen quite a bit of Devontae Graham, and I guess they didn't want him, so they are waiving him and allowing him to become a free agent. Now, almost done, we have a move by the Wizards where they waive Landry Shaman. And yet another waving, we have the Hornets also waving Davis Bertrand. So these three guys, all free agents now. Uh, in 
And speaking of the Hornets, another move from them. They have them signing Miles Bridges to a three-year, $75 million deal to stay with the Hornets. Uh, and non-basketball stuff aside, I think that this is a good deal for him. Uh, I think a couple years ago, you would have had to pay him way more. And then all that stuff came out about him, and you retain a guy who is pretty talented at a fairly good price for what he's worth. Um, really, this franchise, the only good people are Lamelo, um, Brandon Miller, him, and then hopefully the new draft pick. I don't know if there's anyone else really that wowing on the Hornets. So you keep a guy that is one of your best. You just have to worry about the off-the-court issues, and yeah, hopefully. I mean, I've seen, I've seen both sides. I feel like I don't know about both sides, but I feel like I have seen the the girl that he beat defend him and wish well upon him, which is, like, kind of surprising. I don't think usually women getting beat are still supportive of their abusers. So, if she is willing to forgive him, then who am I to say, ah, uh, the Hornets need to cut him for the man that he is. It's a business. It's a sport. You do. You pay who you pay. As long as he doesn't do it again, I think that they're fine. Uh, anywho, after that, you have yet another move by the Detroit Pistons, and this would be them signing Simone Fontecchio to a two-year, $16 million deal. Uh, Fontecchio was acquired via trade midseason from the Utah Jazz, and he's a solid young guy, so good deal. Uh, he honestly could have made some more money, probably. And then, after that, we have the Denver Nuggets acquiring Dario Saric, uh, signing him to a two-year, $10.6 million deal. Um, and this is a good move, I feel like, for the Nuggets. You have to do something. You can't just sit around and do nothing. This is their first move of free agency, really. I think they also picked up Colin Gillespie from the Suns on a two-way contract, but that's not a real move. But yeah, uh, Dario Saric, a stretch four that can shoot the ball decently well. Um, and I'm glad that he's, like, I didn't need the Warriors to keep him by any means or anything like that. So glad that he's going to find a, a home. And yeah. And then we have our latest big free agency move that will shake up the league. This is a Bulls, Kings, and Spurs sign and trade. We have DeMar DeRozan heading over to the Sacramento Kings on a... Oh, shoot. I, I believe it was a three-year, $74 million deal. And as part of the sign and trade, the Spurs are going to receive Harrison Barnes and the Chicago Bulls are going to receive Chris Duarte, two second round picks, in cash. Uh, I think that this is a good move by the Bulls. They get exactly what they're looking for, a young guard who has promising potential, uh, some more draft capital, some cash. They move off a big contract in a guy who is obviously competing, but they're not really trying to compete. Um, so, a uh, good move by them. For the Kings, I also think, like, yeah, I don't know what their defense is going to look like, but you've got two very clutch scorers in a big three of De'Aaron Fox, DeMar DeRozan, and uh, Sabonis is crazy. Like, when you think about that as your third option, if DeRozan is your third option, that is an insane team. So, I like the move. We'll have to see how their defense plummets. I think that DeRozan is a clear, clear upgrade over Harrison Barnes. We'll just have to see how they manage defensively. And the Spurs getting a vet guy like Harrison Barnes. Not a bad move. And then our second to last move is Daniel Tice. The Pelicans are signing Daniel Tice to a one-year deal, getting a big body center to replace their Jonas Valachinas loss. I think that's smart. And finally, the Miami Heat signing Haywood Highsmith to a two-year, $11 million deal. Uh, I think he had a pretty solid season with the Miami Heat this year, and they are going to give him a deal to reward him for his efforts. So, they retain him, and with that, we conclude all of the updates in this year's NBA Free Agency. This is from before the draft, up to the draft, and beyond the draft. That is all of week one. Uh, there's still some big pieces left to fall. Uh, Brandon, Brandon Ingram has not found a new home yet. I feel like that would be pretty major. And uh, personally, I'm only 
Rogers can acquire Lori Markinen. I think that if they get Lori without giving up Kuminga, they actually have a successful offseason. You got a bit younger, you got better depth, um, and you, you have even better spacing than you did before um, without giving up too much. So I'm fine with them giving up like three first round draft picks. Wiggins, uh, and I know that the Jazz don't want Wiggins, but if some team can take him on, I don't really want Wiggins anymore. I would rather have Kuminga start. Uh, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see if the Jazz are actually looking to get rid of him. If the if the asking price is too high, Brandon Ingram is not a horrible piece either. He's pretty good. And what is it? The paint. I don't know if it's. I think mid range. His mid range scoring is one of the best in the league. Uh, pretty good on fadeaways and things like that. So he's definitely a scoring option that would help with help the Warriors. Um, either of these two guys, if they could put to, put together something for Jimmy Butler, I wouldn't mind it. I don't know. There are a lot of ways that they could go. They're all very like high asks, but I do want to. I want the Warriors to be in a win now situation, and everyone in the West is making moves. You have to do something big in order to compete. Otherwise, you can just call it quits. And so, that's my best hope. Uh, as far as winners of free agency so far, I'd have to go with probably the Celtics, uh, just for keeping their championship core and entire roster the, in, in the exact same. And by the looks of it, the 76ers, you know, picking up all these valuable pieces. Hopefully they fit together and they can do something with them. Uh, the losers is probably the Lakers. Uh, just because they miss out on every free agent that they were targeting and they haven't really heard them do anything yet. Um, I, a lot of other teams are making moves to get better and they have not done very much at all. So I want to see what they're able to accomplish, who they could land. They just missed out on DeRozan as well. It seems like the fan base is taking sucker punch to, after sucker punch to the gut. Um, and yeah, I, I think that they're gonna have to do something big in order to keep those people happy. Obviously, LeBron did get JJ Redick, and they got Le they got Bronny, but that's not enough to be better than they were last year. So far, they've just had a bunch of guys opt into their player options. So, maybe they trade for someone, maybe they sign someone. I don't know what exactly they're going to do, but they need to make a move. Uh, and in terms of other teams, yeah, I don't mind what the Knicks are doing. I feel like the Knicks have done really well. The Wizards are probably the most baffling to me. Not really sure what they're going for. I'll have to see the Wizards and the Pistons. Obviously, when you're as bad as they were this year, any move that you make is probably good, but I just don't know how good. Uh, I can't really comprehend it. And, uh, yeah, as far as content and things like that, uh, sorry for the slight break. I was back in Santa Barbara last week helping my roommates move into our new apartment. Uh, we finally were able to move all our furniture on July 1st and get it all set up. So maybe I'll be able to share some photos here and there um, of what it's looking like. There's still a bit of patchwork needed. Um, there's some issues with the floors and like the shower doors and the, the stove. Um, but it's a nice place and we can definitely host a lot more people comfortably and cook more easily with the kitchen. So I'm happy with it. Uh, not too far from campus, though it is a bit further than last year. And uh, yeah, along with that, I think that now that I'm back here, I do have a couple weeks where I can get back into the groove of things. Um, I have some high school friends visiting me starting the 24th of July, so between now and the 24th is really my prime time to get videos out, so I think you'll see me pretty consistently for the next two weeks, and then after that, probably not as much in the one week that they're here. 